Hello, welcome back to another Django screencast. Today we're going to be talking about flat pages. Now, flat pages is one of the contrib applications that comes with Django. Now, we're not going to be talking specifically about flat pages because they're quite easy to implement. And in fact, we're going to go through the process of implementing flat pages in this application just as we go through what we're going to really talk about. And that is, I want to show you how you can implement specific URL mapping within your flat pages. And I'll get more into that a little bit later. So let's get started. Here we have an application that's a delicious link style application and we want to implement an about us page. So the first thing I'm going to do is switch over to TextMate and I'm going to modify the settings file. Now there's two places that I need to make modifications by default. First, I need to add flat pages to my installed apps. So I'm just going to go ahead and add it here. And that's Django Contrib Flat Pages. And the second thing that you need to add is up in the, whoops, I missed it, up in the uh, middleware classes, we need to add the middleware, middleware handler for flat pages, which is Django Contrib Flat Pages Middleware Flat Page Fallback Middleware. And we'll be talking about this middleware in just a minute. So if I spelt everything correctly, and save that and go over to terminal and I'm going to go ahead and just type manage py sync db which should add the correct tables into my application looks like it did of course if we refresh the page over here we're not going to see anything different, but where the flat pages will show up is in the admin application. I'm just going to go into admin here. And you notice now we have a new item here called flat pages. I can go into the flat pages and add a new flat page. And when we add a flat page, the URL that we give it is the URL that we want the user to go it'd be everything after our local host colon 8000 so in this case I'm just gonna say about us be sure to have the leading and trailing slashes that's the uh, hint is right here but just want to point that out this would be about us and I'm just gonna grab some content from um, oops some orum Let's see. There we go. Had that in a clipboard. There's also some options down here that some people don't see. There's sites, the sites that the flat, flat pages will apply to. Most people see that. But down here is the advanced options. Some people don't know that you can enable comments on a flat page page. You can require registration so that only logged in users will see this page. And you can also specify a specific template name. Now we haven't done that, but by default, the system will provide flat pages slash default.html. So that's where the um, flat page is going to be looking for the template that we'll use for our application. So we haven't added that yet, but let's go ahead and save this record. And now let's go over to our editor. Now back in our editor, under our templates directory, we need to add a directory called flat pages. I'm going to add a new folder, call it flat pages. And under that, if you remember, the page that it said was called default.html. So we're going to go ahead and add a file called default.html. And we'll just start with a blank file here. Okay. The first thing we're going to do is extend the base HTML. 
Because my template system is set up that I have a base HTML here that my other pages inherit from. This provides the outline infrastructure to the web page. And then the next thing I'm going to do is redefine the block that's called content. And that's in this base HTML again. So if we look at this base HTML, you can see that I've got block content here. And that's where my content goes. So within that, all I have to do is put flat page dot content. The flat page passes in context an object called flat page and within that there are a couple of items. One is content which is the body content of the flat page. Another is title. So if I wanted to display the title or something like that I could also um, use flat page dot title. But uh, let's just leave it at that. And um, now if we go back to our web page, we can go back in here. And if I type about us, we don't have it wired into our pages anywhere. But if I type about us, there we go. We see the flat page content that fits right in here. So that works well. Now obviously if I type about them, I get a 404 page and it says that it can't find it. Which makes sense because we don't have any flat page called about them. Now the way flat pages works is this middleware item that we looked at or that we specified in our settings file, this fallback, uh, flat page fallback middleware item, this item here sets up a piece of middleware that captures a 404. Notice that we haven't mapped in our URLs, we haven't mapped anywhere flat page information. So what happens is when we type about us, or here, There's a 404 that happens because it can't find the item in their URLs. That gets caught by the middleware and then it gets rerouted. It gets looked up into the flat page uh, table. And if, if that URL that we map exists in the flat page table, then it gets rerouted to there and the page is displayed. Let's look at, whoops, let's look at that middleware item. I've got it up here. This is the Django source code, and this is the middleware.py from the flat pages contrib. And if we look at that flat page fallback middleware, you can see that it's processing the response. And if it's a 404, or if it's not a 404 rather, it just returns a response. So in other words, if, if the page that we're looking for is uh, like the delinquent page, for instance, it's not going to be a 404, it's just going to return the response. Otherwise, if it is a 404, it returns flat page request and then the request path, which that goes into the flat page view. So we don't really need to look into all that code. Uh, you can if you want. It's in the django.contrib.flatpage um, section of the source. But what happens is it looks up into that, and if that gets a 404, then it goes ahead and returns the 404 response. Okay. Now some people don't like the way flat pages works because it's really what's happening. It's waiting till it gets a 404 and then it's handling it. Now myself, it's I don't really think it's that big a deal, but if, for instance, you wanted to have specific URLs, and I do this in a particular app that I have. I don't want the chance that somebody in the flat pages will just go in there and add something to the site. So we've declared certain flat pages within the site and those can be modified at will, but I don't want the uh, users of the site to be able to just specify any page and have it just start showing up because they've specified the URL. So the way we do that, let's go back to our screencast project. And 
The first thing we want to do is go into settings and remove this flat page middleware. Now if we do that and we go back to our page, you'll notice that when we do about us, we should just get a straight 404, which we do because it's not mapped anywhere. So the next step, once we remove the middleware and we're getting the regular 404 like we should, the next step is really to just map the URLs specifically. So in our URLs.py module, we need to add a new pattern match. It's going to match this pattern that we're looking for specifically. Now you might be inclined to do something like this. And that would come from django.contrib.flatpages.views.flatpage. And this won't work. And I'll show you why. Go back to our browser. Type in about us. See, notice here it says flat page takes two arguments, one given. The problem is that this flat page view is expecting two parameters, a request parameter, and the second parameter being a URL parameter. So we have to find a way to capture this URL that we're mapping specifically. So to do that, we just use the capture syntax, like that. And then we close it off over here. For that matter, we can end the, the uh, pattern that way. Now if I type that right, we can go back over in here. about us and we get our page. So we've just mapped about us specifically to that flat page request view. Now this works well and you can see what's happened here is that we've captured what we've typed in here in about us. And so that works well if we want a specific page but let's say we had a several pages. Let's say we had about us and about them. Now we could add just another entry below it and do about them. We could do about and anything, but then again we would be stuck in the situation where somebody could put about me and, and put a page about themselves up or whatever. So that would be open-ended. So maybe what we want to do is just add to our pattern matching here and just do something like about us or them. and match it to our page. So now if we go back and we do about us, let me get this again, that works. And if we do about them, we get an error because obviously we haven't defined about them. So we should get an error, but notice that the error is different. It is a 404, but the actual error message we get in the debug page says no flat page matches the given query. So we know that what's happening is it's actually calling that flat page view and passing in our URL. So at this point, we can just go into our admin, add a new flat page you know, called about them, our competition. Come down here and save it. And if we go back to here and type about them, we get the page we want. Now if we type anything else, like about screencasts or something, we get the standard 404 page. So we've been able to specifically match uh, the URLs in our flat page based on what we want as opposed to having them open-ended and we no longer need that middleware anymore in our settings. Look at our settings. We no longer need the middleware because we're not allowing it to go to a 404 first. So thank you for watching and I hope this was helpful and I look forward to seeing you on the next Django screencast.